Hey everyone, it's Craig. I'm out in the garage today, and today we have Game Gears. Ever wondered what weathermen wear below the waist? Game Gear! So we've got four of these Game Gears. I'm gonna take a look through them, see what we can do. Various conditions from semi working, screen's a bit knackered, but we'll see what we can do with that one. Through to missing bits and pieces, and then these two. Not great at all, but let's see what we can do. Even if we can take parts from bits and pieces, get one working, and I've got a couple of mods I want to do to these. I'd love to have a finished working Game Gear um, that I can play on. So let's give it a go and see what we can do. Um. So this is the best one we have. This one actually powers on. You get nothing when you're looking at the screen normally, but from a funny angle, which hopefully the camera will pick up now, I'm going to power it on. You should get the Sega logo. And then uh, I've got a 4-in-1 multi-game in there. Yeah, you can just about see that on the camera now. But when I tip it upright, the screen's just white. So this one's a capacitor issue, definitely. Fingers crossed we can use this one as the the main system and all the mods then we'll do to this one using parts from the others and a cap kit as well. Cool. Okay, so just quickly taking this one apart. That's the This is the one with the uh, capacitors issue where we can see the screen on a funny angle. And immediately there's an issue with it, which I've noticed. Where is it now? Aha. This little capacitor is dropped off the board from somewhere so that's going to be an issue straight away um i bet that's probably off the sound board somewhere and it's causing the issue to have zero sound actually i've spotted it it's right in here uh, there we go so right in here behind that cable there's a space where that's missing it looks pretty corroded as well so that's why we're getting no sound but all of these capacitors on this board need replacing so all of these down here down this end down here and then a couple over that the other side as well around here need replacing okay so it's not a massive job to change all these the little bit of fiddly because they're so small um, but the solder pads underneath and once you've moved them out of the way aren't too bad to use um, so we'll we'll give them a go and then hopefully we'll have a game gear that is working condition that we can start to use as a modification board because I've got another couple of things I want to do okay so they're all taken apart now this one down here being our main donor board, this is the setup which has the faded screen but still works. Had the issue with the soundboard, remember that capacitor was missing in there, so that's going to be the issue with that. But we're going to replace all these capacitors on this board and use this as our master setup. But while I was here I thought I'd take the others apart and see what we've got inside of them. So they're all model 1, so you can tell that from the two chipsets on there, down the bottom left. This one has got a, a funky red inside of the case I don't know what that's all about if you know anything about that please leave a comment down below because I've never seen a red inside of the game gear before this one up here again move that out of the way uh, again model one very similar setup to this one down here and this one's slightly different again so it's a model one less detail on the motherboard but still got the two chipsets on here so it's still a model one so what we're going to do now is take this main one apart, redo the capacitors on this one, and then we're going to go from there to see what else we can get running. I want to make this one up and running, and then we'll worry about the rest then, see what we can do. Cool, catch you in a bit. Okay, so the capacitor kit we're going to use is a Z Labs Game Gear capacitor kit. Uh, comes with every capacitor we need in there to recap this, um, the soundboard, the power board and the main board as well so i'm going to crack on with that because that's a, a little bit of a long process but it's going to take a little bit of cleaning up especially this one here where that one's leaked obviously so we're going to have to clean that up with some isopropyl and just get that nice and clean before we start soldering onto that one um, if i find that this soundboard is broken and not repairable i'm not even going to get into the detail of this i'm going to get into another soundboard which is great because we've got a number of uh, donor systems we can use and I'm going to use another soundboard which is in a better condition than this. 
Okay, so this is our main game gear. I've actually just tested it off the batteries and it doesn't work off batteries. Only works off 12 volt power supply. So we are gonna recap that power board as well. So I've got a mixture of the boards here. So I've got the one that works over there on the uh, batteries. And then this board works off the, the input jack for the power supply but not off the batteries on the back. So obviously a different capacitor has gone on each one of those. So I'm gonna to need to recap them to get one decent working power board before we move on. Here we go. Okay guys, so this is what I've been up to the last 10 minutes or so is getting the capacitors to match um, off the website to make sure we've got the right capacitors for this model board. So there's a twin R6 model and the capacitors what I normally do is put them all into a cardboard box like this. So we've got the main board, the capacitor numbers to the left, and then I've matched up the capacitor to the sheet. So we've got the right capacitors in each place. Then we've got the power board, again, capacitor number, and then capacitor slotted in. And then the sound board, with the capacitor number, and then the capacitors slotted in next to it. Okay, so a quick update. I finished the capacitors on the main board, and the good thing is, let's give this a go. So you can see, not going to pick up great on camera, but you can see the Sega's coming in nice and clear now. Okay, so this is a parcel that's just arrived from Amazon. Let's open it up and take a look. Okay, so this is the 5 volt to 9 volt cable that I've ordered on Amazon. So 5 volt comes in, 9 volt goes out. The reason I've ordered this is the Game Gear requires 9 volts to run. Um, a power bank that you use for a mobile phone is 5 volts. Okay, so the idea is to take a 5 volt power supply, like a power bank for a mobile phone, take that feed in, increase it to 9 volts, take that feed out and plug it into the Game Gear. We're going to test that first of all. If that works, then we're going to try and retrofit this with a USB connector inside the game gear so we can run straight off USB power banks, straight off USB on the wall and other connections as well. Let's give it a go. Okay, so this is one of my donor game gears. This is the one that has a, it's running off batteries at the moment, but it has a faulty horizontal line screen. I don't know whether that's going to pick up on camera. Let's have a look. Uh, there we go. So you can see the screen's got the horizontal lines on there. Um, most people say that that's not repairable unless you change the screen out for that. So um, this is going to be a donor system. And the main reason I'm using this at the moment is that I've opened this up and it's obviously you can still see it's powered up. You can see the backlight coming through there. So what we're, what we're looking to do here now is we're going to measure the voltage across these. So we've got one, two, three batteries that side, three batteries this side. We're going to measure the voltage here, which should be 9 volts. So 8.94, so these batteries have had a little bit of discharge on them in the last few minutes while it's running. Um, so the, the intention is, this cable that I bought and showed you earlier, I'm going to use that. So a 5 volt charger, which is a mobile phone charger, will step up to the 9 volts that we require for these two battery packs. So what I'm going to do as a test in the first instance is I've snipped off the, the uh, connector on the end. I've got the red and black cables now, which give me nine volts. So I just measured those as well when it's plugged in. I'm going to take these batteries out. And I'm going to solder these two onto these two battery terminals. I'm going to give that a go, see if this powers up. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I tinned the wires with a bit of solder on those. I've cleaned these two connectors and added some flux to them as well. I'm going to attempt to solder these two onto the, the connectors now. Give that a go. Okay, 
So they're attached. Let's give this a go. Okay, so here's our full setup now. So we've got the Samsung power supply, five volts, going into the five volt to nine volt step up, which comes around the cable, and I've wired that temporarily straight onto these two connectors. So the next thing to do is uh, flip this over, plug this into the wall, and hope we don't get any magic smoke coming out of this. We've got power. Okay, so we now have power. Game gear power. We've still got the horizontal lines on the screen. And now that is coming straight from nine, 5 volt to 9 volt step up off the Samsung charger on the wall. Okay, so I'm pretty chuffed with the test so far. So just to summarize, the six batteries that come into the game gear to power it, um, obviously 1.5 volts each gives us 9 volts. So the nine volts that are coming in now are coming via a five volt mobile phone charger off the wall, which will um, allow us to swap that out in the future to a, a battery pack or whatever else we want to do if we want a mobile game in on there. Um, it comes in from the five volts into that step up converter. That step up takes it from five to nine volts. And then I've soldered that straight onto the back of the battery terminals, um, giving us a simulated battery experience. So. To me, that is working brilliantly at the moment. I don't know whether there's going to be any flaws or any other issues with it in the future, but I'm going to give that a go. So the next step for me is to do the modded game gear and make sure I can uh, get a USB connector in there as well. Um, the plan is to use a mini USB-C connector because um, that will allow me to plug in USB-C cables straight from a power bank or any other mobile phone connector. Um, I use a Highway phone or Huawei or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I use this USB-C so if I can use the same connector and charger for that that's going to be great for me yeah so the next step is really just to get a game gear up and running properly now with the capacitors updated uh, that's going to take me a little bit of a time to do so I'm going to crack on with that now and then next step is to find a way of getting this USB-C mounted cool keep watching Okay, so I'll now cut down the cable going from the 9 volt out of this step up. So it now fits nice and neatly in here, and I solder those back in. I did do the caps on the power board in the end. I just thought it would be worthwhile while we got it all open. Um, the next challenge now is to use a drill and drill the holes in the bottom of the case so we can get this USB-C connector in there. Um, once we've done that, we can snip this cable down, solder into this, and then glue that into place in the bottom of this case, and have the charge port on the bottom of the case. Let's give it a go. So now we've got the USB-C fitted into the bottom. Not the neatest of jobs, but I haven't got a Dremel, so I've just done it with a, a drill bit and hacked away at it for a while. This fits inside quite neatly now, but I'm going to need to take this casing off and solder those wires into that uh, connector in there. So we've got the four pins there that we can solder onto, and then the USB-C connector on the other side that's going to go into the bottom of the game gear and then be soldered onto that um, current USB cable. Okay, so now we've got this all soldered in place, so we've got the plus and minus onto the battery terminals, into the cable, through the step up, and then down to this USB-C connector that we've got soldered in. Plus 5 volts is on the left and the ground is on the right, uh, so they've been soldered in place. I've not tested this yet, but fingers crossed that should now take 
a feed from a standard USB-C cable, whether that's connected to the wall or whether it's connected to a power pack, in as five volts and then step it up to nine and then give us the nine volts for the game gear that it needs to run. Let's give it a go. Look at the state of my desk. Absolute mess. But anyway, we've got the mobile phone charger plugged into the wall, giving out the five volt signal down our cable into our USB-C connector, which we're gonna plug into the bottom here. That needs hot glue in into place so it doesn't move anymore. But fingers crossed this will give us power. And I can see the Sega logo, things bad angle on the screen, but there we go. So we're now powered our five volts into that nine volt step up, all connected so we can run a power pack or anything else on that. Brilliant. Absolutely love it. I've got a couple of bits and pieces I want to tidy up inside. I'm going to build it back together and give it a go. Okay, so I've just used the hot glue gun to secure the USB-C connector in place. I've also put a little bit onto the step-up converter to hold that in place. So everything's now hopefully a little bit snug inside. I'm going to rebuild and see how we get on. Okay, so that was a busy couple of hours. Um, we now have a Game Gear that works fully off a USB C cable into a 5 volt power bank which will charge your mobile phones or anything else. So we now have Sega, Sega. Uh, Game Gear that works fully off of that cable into the bottom, plug it out and we've got the USB C cable there. So pretty universal, you can charge that on the back of the chair in your train, you can charge up and use that whatever you need to now. No need for six batteries, which is going to cost you a fortune because they don't last very long. And there's no need for your huge Sega power supply brick, which, uh, again, not a bad piece of kit, but again, you don't want to be carrying that everywhere with you. This is pretty universal and it can be used anywhere whether you're out and about as well. Um, so it's been a busy couple of hours getting the caps sorted on this and then getting that installed down to the bottom, which was actually quite pretty straightforward. Um, if I was going to take your time on it again, I'll probably get a Dremel and fit that in a little bit neater, but actually the, the finish on it is not too bad um, for, a, for a bit of a hack job with the drill. A bit of glue gun on there to see, seal it in place wasn't too bad. Uh, the capacitors are a pain in the arse to do, if I'm honest. Um, lots of fiddly things to solder on there, but the worst thing is you've got to put them into a position where when you put this case back together, they don't get knocked out of the way so I had to move a couple of capacitors off camera just to get them sorted but all in all really chuffed with this I don't think I've ever seen anyone else power a game gear off of a 5 volt power bank before so please comment down below if you've got any comments on this any ideas that you could improve on give us a like and please subscribe we've got lots more other projects coming in the future I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you soon Uh...